was growing grass three or four months ago and it'll be making pots into Larry in a month. Hi everyone, I am so excited. I'm about ready to head over to Murphy's, California to Quile Kilns. I'm gonna be meeting with Pamela Quile, the owner, and she's gonna give me a tour of the facility. I cannot wait to see what this place is all about. I heard they actually make their own clay and they've been doing it the same way for many years. So I hope you guys enjoy. I cannot wait to see this place. Okay, here we are at Quile Kill. I brought my son Adam. There he is behind me. Husband Brian is in the trunk. And we're getting ready to go in there and uh, meet Pam. I am a production potter, therefore, I have, although we have wheels, we also have other production systems. So I have jiggering, which is a mechanized wheel throwing system okay. where you essentially throw into a plaster mold. And we designed and made all of the molds, so it's our family design line, so which is our dishware line. Um, I have slip casting molds on the wall that we do. We made probably half of them, but I do buy commercial molds if they aren't too frou frou. Okay. <laughs> well, let's walk into our clay manufacturing. Okay, that's great. So uh, this section, we added this uh, block section in '62 um, when we started manufacturing clay for the public. Um, my mother and father moved up here to uh, become studio potters in 1954. Father was teaching pottery in the 40s and 50s in Stockton. My mother was a Marine Corps officer, took her GI Bill, went to art school. They met teaching in Stockton and um, eventually my grandparents offered them a house, a horse barn, 100 acres and a babysitter if they wanted to quit their real jobs and move to the mountains and be potters. In the 40s and 50s, there were no commercial materials available for a studio potters period. There were no commercially made wheels, kilns, glazes, or clay. You couldn't just go purchase moist clay, it didn't exist. At which point, Mills College and CCAC and uh, UC Berkeley and uh, City Potters said, well, we want to purchase clay pre-made from you, and we started becoming a clay manufacturing company. So this is our 65th year manufacturing clays for the public, and uh, we're bulldozer mining locally. We are the only company still um, using this wet process in the United States to produce clays. It makes a, an excellent product. It doesn't have to be aged. Um, however, it's more labor. Edge, but they're convex in the center. And there's a hole that leads from plate to plate to plate to plate to plate. So when these are all pushed together, we start pumping clay uh, slip at 120 pounds of pressure through a hose. And it fills the void between the first two plates goes through the hole, fills the void between the second two plates, goes through the hole, and fills and fills and fills and fills and fills and fills down the end. And then we keep pumping more into it, so we're putting it under pressure. Once we start pushing more clay water into the mix, the water that's in it perks through the felt. Mm -hmm. So we're pushing in 4,000 pounds of clay as a slip, compressing it to 2,000 pounds of clay as cakes that look like a big Eggo breakfast waffle. Right. And then we're pushing out 2,000 pounds of water. We're borrowing water from our well, we're using it to mix, we're pushing it back through, we're filtering it, and we're returning it to the well. So oh, we nice. have no harm, no foul. We're not adding anything that I don't want in my drinking water. So then the cakes from here are what will feed into the pug mill to slice and dice and extrude that as a block. So I have one employee who's going to be 79 this year oh, who shovels four to 8,000 pounds of clay every morning um, and then uh, uh, makes the mixes, uh, pulls the presses, picks up the 60 pound cakes, pushes them through the pug mills, picks them up as 25, 50 pound, 50 pounds again, and loads my truck so I can deliver. Now what does this fire do? All of our clays fire comfortably up to the cone 10, 11, Don fires them at 12, <laughs> um, I fire my production work at cone 6 and 7. Okay. And that's a comfortable spot. It's uh, vitreous enough. I started with Leslie Ceramics in 1960, I think, mm -hmm. and we've been working with both Leslie's and Clay People and Clay Planet ever since. I do make my own glazes, and so I have a glaze laboratory. Oh. Um, and so I have pieces that are drying over the heater. I've got some student work, um, some wheel thrown ware, some hand built things, more ware sitting in the other room. Um, as I said, I'm doing everything from scratch. I'm use, I need to continue using the same glazes that my mother used in the 40s and 50s and 60s because I have to um, reproduce a lot of her work. If people bought dinnerware from us in the 60s, 
I need to be able to copy it so oh, that I can replace nice. it anywhere. These are basically a white clay. I used to mix up my own base white clay. So instead I'm purchasing a pre-made um, Laguna product. I'm, pre I'm buying their Laguna B-Mix casting body. It's perfectly compatible with my clays and most others. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm using 100 and 200 grams of base white casting body and simply adding either cobalt or cobalt and iron or 2% uh, cobalt, 5% cobalt or, or mason glaze stains. To decorate my two to 3,000 pieces a year, I probably spend $50 in materials. I'm working with uh, electric kilns. Primarily, I have four electric kilns here. I'll be staging things to go into the bisque load. Then I'll be staging bisque pieces that I need to glaze. Then I'll be staging glaze pieces that I need to put in the kiln. Obviously, you don't want to waste any space. So I won't ever load a kiln that I don't have enough pieces to load the whole shelf at one time. So I may something may sit here for six months if somebody makes something. <laughs> I hope that's yeah. six <laughs> time. I came home with some clay that I cannot wait to use. I'm going to be doing a raku firing. Also, I came home with some wine and some olive oil and some beautiful, beautiful memories. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you so much, Pamela, for being gracious with your time when you had customers coming in and out. You had a business running and you still were able to give me a tour. I loved it, every bit of it. It was bigger and better than I imagined. I definitely will be back. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.